Yes, my people, it's Robert, an ambassador for Christ. And as you know where I go, the kingdom goes. Remember, like, subscribe, share, and eat the fish, spout the bone, some things you may agree with, some things you may not. Now, I'm going to speak to you today about dimensions, different dimensions, traveling through dimensions. What are dimensions? What's going on? And all the rest of it. You see, as human beings, we are so powerful. Humans are so powerful and we don't understand how much power we really, that we really have. Satan does. That's why he tries to keep us in the dark. Now, when I talk about how much power humans have, I'm not talking about just the believers. I'm talking about, I'm speaking about humans on a whole. Okay? Human beings are the only, only creation that God, God created humans, and we are the only one of his creation that can cross three dimensions. Animals can't cross three dimensions. Anything in the animal world, anything in the sea, sky, they, angels, demons, and all the rest of it, they can't operate in all three dimensions like we do. What are the three dimensions? There are more dimensions, but I'm just going to speak about three of them. Okay? The first one is the third heaven, where God is. And that's where the Apostle Paul was caught up to. The Bible says that, you know, the Apostle Paul said, you know, I was caught up into the third heaven, into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. It's powerful, powerful scripture. But he said that he saw things that were not lawful for him, that were not lawful for him to utter. It's powerful. That's the third dimension. That's where, or that's the, the third heaven where God resides. That's where God's throne room is. Even though God operates outside of heaven, because that's called dimension zero, but I'm not going to go into that. That's like a different dimension outside of all, of all the dimensions and times that we have because God operates outside all of it. Anyway, that's the third heaven I'm speaking about. God's throne room is the third heaven. Now you've got a second heaven, which is the conscious, the conscious mind, the consciousness, your soul, the conscious area. Okay, and in that conscious area, that is where angels and demons reside. Okay, and that's where bondage is. Then you've got, <laughs> I'm going to go into that. I'll, don't worry, I'll go back into that. Then you've got the first dimension, if I can call it, or the, sorry, the, the consciousness, that's the second heaven. You've got like the first heaven, which is the physical realm where we live. And we as humans can operate over all three. We can operate in the third heaven, second heaven, first heaven, okay, or the natural. So basically what happened was that man was, in the Garden of Eden, man was open to all these three realities, these three dimensions. He operated in all three of them simultaneously. But something happened, sin happened, Adam sinned. And when Adam sinned, the third heaven or God's throne room was shut off from human beings. It was closed. So now man, it was closed, simultaneously closed, and hell was simultaneous, set simultaneously open. So heaven closed, when man sinned, heaven closed, hell opened. So he still operates in three dimensions. <laughs> Sorry, two, should I say, I got that wrong. Operate, he now operates in two dimensions, but now hell's open. So before, heaven, third heaven, second heaven, earth, Adam operated in all of them. Then when Adam sinned, heaven was closed, hell was opened. You see, it's deep. Now, well, this has to be deep, didn't I? It's not, it's not a little joke what I'm talking about, it's really, really going in. Now, um, I want to go into the second heaven, the conscious mind. It's called the second heaven. This is the realm where demons and angels reside, and you have access to this area. All humans have access to this area, the soulish realm. See, in that soulish realm, that is where um, angel, that's where demons will speak to you. That's where angels will speak to you, in that second heaven, that soulish realm. Let me give you a little bit of an idea of what happened or where it is. Um, in Daniel, the Bible says that Daniel was in, he said that I was, Daniel said that I was in mourning for three and a half, or so, I was in mourning for three weeks, and I ate no pleasant bread or sweet thing, and I didn't anoint my face or anoint myself until the whole three weeks was completed, 21 days. He said that he basically went on a partial fast. He was eating um, pulses and beans and that sort of stuff there. And then he said that an angel appeared to him. On the 21st day, an angel appeared. I said to him, Daniel, when you set your mind, uh, when you said, on the first day that you prayed, I was sent with an answer. But the prince of the power or the prince of Persia withstood me 21 days. Now, we know that Satan and his angelic um, fallen angels don't operate in the third heaven. They have not got access to the third heaven because of sin. They've been relegated to the soulish conscious realm, the second heaven. 
And as I said, that's where angels and demons reside. And that's where you have this battle between the angel that was sent from God. From, so in the, so let's, get, let's get this picture right. Daniel prays. God hears it in the third heaven. God sends, dispatches an angel with the answer. Okay, The answer comes now into the conscious level where the angels and demons reside. And that's where the battle happened. That this angel um, had a fight with the prince of Persia. That's the ruling demonic prince of Persia. It's a principality of Persia. The Bible speaks, speak, that's why the Bible speaks about principalities and powers. These are angelic um, ranks. So this angel, this messenger angel was sent from God with, with the answer to give to Daniel, who was actually in Babylon or Persia at that time. Um, and the angel couldn't get through because the prince of the power of, or the, the, the ruling prince of Persia wouldn't let that angel go through. This conscious domain, this conscious level, and then obviously uh, Michael came. Then the angel said that, "Oh, Michael, your prince. I, I, um, uh, Michael is the the prince, principality of Israel." And he said, "Then the angel said, oh, but lo, your prince Michael, the archangel, came and helped me to get through, and now I'm here with the answer." And he gave him the answer to what was going on. Now, back to what I'm saying. So that's, that's the second heaven. It didn't happen in, this, in, in, in heaven where God is, God throne room, no. It didn't happen on the earth, no. It happened in the spiritual, second, the spiritual domain, the, the second heaven. That's where all this stuff happens. That's where Satan and his angelic host that, that fell with him, that's where they reside. So anything that needs to get through into the earth realm from heaven has to cross through the second heaven. Now, I spoke about this. I said, I, I was praying in the Holy Spirit one day, and I said I saw the prayer catcher demon, and there's a, I've done a video about it, and you can go and check it out. One of my older videos, I must, have done it, I must have done it about two, three months ago, or two months ago. Check it out. It talks about the second heaven, how I saw this angel taking prayers. He was in, this angel was in the second heaven. Now, you see, in this soulish realm, the second heaven, all humans have access to it. You have access to it right now, as wherever you are, you have access to this realm. This is the realm where demons will speak to you. This is the realm where, this is, this is the realm, see, people need to understand about bondage. When someone is in spiritual bondage or spiritually, uh, what's the word called, they, they are possessed. They got possessed from the second heaven. They're, it's all in the head. The demons will come in through the second heaven, well, your, your soulish area, the second heaven where you have access to, all humans have, have access, because you have a soul, you have access to the invisible, invisible second realm, or the second heaven, straight away. And as I said, this is where demons reside, and angels reside. So, any bondage that you receive, or get in, if you get into any bondage, it's not bondage in the physical realm, it's bondage in the spiritual, soulish, second heaven realm. That's where the bondage is, it's in your mind. So you, the bondage first, the demons first try to get in your mind first, and when they get in your mind, then they can possess a part of your body. It's gonna get deep, okay? Remember, I said I'm going deep, and I, I don't know how long the video is gonna be because it's gonna be a, it's just a deep video. Do you know what I mean? Talking about dimensions and what we have access to. Now, this is where it gets quite deep because people who are, remember, I said unsaved or saved people have access to the second dimension, the second heaven, and this is where you have your clairvoyance. People who are not saved but they have this access, you have your clairvoyance, your spiritualists, you have your, your paranormal people, they have access to this second heaven as well. Witches, wizards, they have access to this second, uh, second heaven. Um, you know you get people that are quite deep into the, the new age, they're deep into the meditation and the um and all that sort of whatever and they're meditating and they're, you know, the secret and you know, the, 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 the infinite wisdom of the, of the universe. They're in the second heaven. As I said, in the second heaven, that's where demons reside. And this, this is what's quite deep. As someone who is not saved, these people understand the second heaven. They're not saved, but they understand how the second heaven works. And they go in there, they operate in there, and they receive, um, like the secret, you know, attracting money, attracting all this peace, and attracting, you know, the secret, you know, how to attract and ask the universe for anything. That's the second heaven. And what happens when people go into the second heaven then get possessed by demons. That's the reason why these people get with New Age and all these yoga meditation, they get possessed. They're possessed by evil spirits. How do they get them? Second heaven. And they understand about astral projection and stuff. It's all, that's all second heaven talk. 
It's not third heaven, second heaven talk. So those types of people go into the second heaven, the conscious area, the soulish realm. They get, they, 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 they get instructions from, from the evil spirits or whatever, and then they bring it to the earth and manifest it. They manifest it in the earth. See, they think that they're getting it because they are deep. It's not because they're deep. They don't understand that. When they go in that realm, they're having, they're, it's not angels talking to them. They open themselves up to demons. It's demons giving them instructions. It's quite heavy, I know. That's the reason why you get these paranormal people and people that um, clairvoyance and stuff, they have a sensitivity to that second heaven. Why? Because they operate in there. They know how it operates. They're always in that area with all their crystals and their, 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 their humming and their, what's that word, their, their meditations. They have access to this, this, this realm, this area. And, you know, that's the reason why they have access to evil spirits. They say, oh, you know, that e that, you know, they do necromancy and say, you know, they get in a circle and an evil spirit comes up. That's all in the soulish realm. That's all in the second heaven. That's all in the conscious realm. All humans have access to it. But like I said, you get possessed in that area. Now, it's powerful, okay, because when Christ, sorry, when Adam died, I mean, when Adam sinned, well, Adam did die, <laughs> spiritually and physically in a day. But when Adam sinned, um, the, the third heaven, God's realm, was closed to human beings. It was closed to man. But when Christ died, he reopened the third heaven back up. The paradise, he opened it back up. So humans now have access back to the third heaven. And the access to the third heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, this is what's quite powerful. Like I said, these people who are not saved on the earth, they have access to the first heaven where we live the physical realm, and they have access to the second heaven, that's where angels and demons reside. But they don't have access to the third heaven. Now, us as believers, we've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of Christ's uh, death, the third heaven is now open, and we have access to the third heaven now, where we didn't have access before. It's all because of what Christ done on the cross. So now we operate on all three levels now as bridges, human bridges. So what we meant to do, I said it on a video yesterday, I think it was on the day before, I said that we're meant to go into the third heaven where paradise is, get a revelation and bring it into the, in, and, and manifest that revelation into the physical realm as humans. So this is what's quite powerful. You see, demons haven't got bodies and they need a human being to operate through to bring their will to pass in the earth, to bring their wicked devices to pass in the earth because demons can't do it without a body. The same with God. God can't move on the earth without a body. That's why we are called the what? <laughs> the body of Christ, you see? Because we are open to the third heaven, to where God's revelation is and, God, and where God resides and he needs us to receive a revelation from him and manifest it into the physical because God can't manifest his will into the physical without a body. This is the whole reason why Jesus Christ came on the earth. This is the whole reason why Christ, Je God in heaven, the Father in heaven, said, right, I need a body. So he, 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 with, with, um, uh, he got himself, he supplied himself a body, isn't it? It's quite deep, you know, because God said, you know, um, when, when Noah, <laughs> not Noah, when um, Abraham and it was a sacrifice Isaac, Isaac said to him, you know, where's the, where, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, don't worry, God shall provide his own sacrifice. It's an allusion to the cross. It's an allusion to him coming on the earth. So God needed a sacrifice. He needed a body. So hence, you had the Christ was born. And this is what's deep. God sent the sacrifice, but he indwelt the sacrifice that he sent. So God created a body through uh, Mary, but then he indwelt the sacrifice, the body. This is the body. God's inside the body. <laughs> Do you understand? Just like the body was killed on the cross, but then the spirit went back, the father went back. So he's father in creation, son in redemption, and Holy Spirit in regeneration. I'm talking about God, the three different, the three different sides of, of, of the God that we serve. You know, I'm, what am I, sorry, back up. I'm going to go somewhere totally different about Godhead and stuff like that, where it starts to go a little bit, taking us somewhere else. So anyway, God had to, God needed a body to be able to operate in the earth. So he sent Jesus Christ, or he sent the Christ, and indwelt the Christ that he sent. Do you understand? Remember, Christ means the anointed one. So when Christ was on the earth, moving and doing all these miracles, what was he doing? He was getting revelation from the third heaven and manifesting it on the earth. He was manifesting healing, manifesting miracle. All the seven gifts, all the nine gifts of the spirit, apart from um, the last two, speaking in tongues 
and interpretation of tongues. The other seven gifts he operated in, because the other two gifts didn't, weren't needed, didn't come until he died. So the healing, the miracles, and all that sort of stuff, all the, the Old Testament, all the, 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 it's quite deep. The seven gifts that was in the Old Testament, sorry, the, out of the nine gifts, seven of them were operated in throughout the whole Old Testament. Healing, words of knowledge, prophecy, you know, miracles, and all this sort of stuff here. It was all in the Old Testament. It was all being used by the prophets. So God said that, sorry, Jesus Christ said that I do what I see my father doing. So he saw what his father was doing in the third heaven and manifested it into the physical realm. Powerful. Manifest, manifested it. That's what Christ was doing, manifesting spiritual things. So when Christ died now, his body or God's body that he was using, his vessel that he was using is now gone. God is now back in heaven again as a spirit. He has no body on the earth. He, has no rep he, has nothing. he hasn't got his own body on the earth anymore because Christ is now, the body, his body is now gone. So that's the reason why we're all born again and God now works in the body of the believers. He works with, through us and with, within us. We are his body. We are meant to be manifesting spiritual things. We are meant to be manifesting spiritual revelation, God's revelation, heavenly revelation. That's what we're born to do. That's what we're meant to be doing. That's what we're created to do. So when I'm giving you a word right now, like I said in the video uh, the other day, I'm getting a revelation from God and I'm manifesting it into the, in, into the earth. Woo, it's powerful. So we're meant to get revelation or, or, or from God and manifest that to make a difference in the earth as God's body and as God's people on the earth, the body of Christ. So that is, that, that is, the, that's an, <laughs> this, is this is quite deep as well, right? Because each dimension has multiple dimensions within a dimension. Like if you go to heaven as a dimension, the third, I talk about the third heaven, God's dimension, and in that place there, I've been different places in heaven where I've seen, I've seen so much different stuff, but it's different places. It's the same with the second heaven. There's different areas in the second heaven, different dimensions, different places you can you can go and different things that happen. And you've got the third heaven or, or the, the, the physical realm where we live right now. And obviously you can go to a place in, in, in the physical realm. See? The realms of, and in hell, same thing. It's a dimension, it's a realm. It's got different areas in it, different places of torment in hell, different realms. It's powerful. I was going for a little trip. I'm, like, I'm, I'm skipping backwards and forwards between the dimensions. Just to, I hope you can keep up. But we have access to all three realms. Humans only have access to all three realms. Other animals haven't got access. So now, back to the second heaven. You see, in the second heaven, it's quite powerful because... God didn't talk, God, did, God didn't, didn't speak to um, Daniel, God sent an angel to speak. Why? Because the third heaven's closed. <laughs> Remember, the third heaven was closed until Christ, until Christ's sacrifice was made. Then the third heaven was open. So until that time, God sent the angels to speak to people. See, this is, well, this is, this is powerful, I'm going to share with you right now, right? I always, I, always, I always used to get confused of how billionaires and wicked people do so much philanthropy, give money to charity. How do they do it? You know, like J.K. Rowling, she made all the, she wrote all the Harry, Harry Potter books, okay? Witchcraft and wizardry, right? But she had billions. But then, in the news or in the paper the other day, I read that she is no longer a billionaire. She, is now, she lost her billionaire status. She is now a millionaire because of all the, the, the money she's been giving away to charity, right? Now, she hasn't got access to the third heaven. And what happens is, through her wickedness and the wicked books she read, God got her money, God sent an angel and said to that angel, listen, tell her to give all her money, give, tell her to give all her money to charity. Yeah? Because the Bible says that um, uh, the unrighteous people, unrighteous people, or evil people shall gather, it's in Job, it says, unrighteous people gather gold and silver together for the righteous to put on. So he's saying that, and it's, God said that, God, God said that he casteth away the riches of the wicked and of the unrighteous. Or he gives it away to other people. He says that God said that he takes the wealth from the, from the righteous and give it to the ones who are doing good. So God says that because she, ain't got, because she hasn't got access, or these people who are doing this great philanthropy, they haven't got access to the, 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 the third heaven. God sends that angel to them to speak to them in the second heaven and gives them a revelation on how that they or give them instruction through the, through the second heavens in the soulish realm that all, all humans have access to. He gives them a revelation saying, give your money away to charity. They think they're doing it because of them. No, it's because of angel, because God is casting their, 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 their riches away and God sends an angel and tells them to go and give their money to, that's why you've got people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, all these people. I'm not know if they're all wicked, they're saved, I don't know, but I'm just saying on a whole, this is the reason why these top people that we see as wicked, and a lot of them are, they do a lot of charity work because God is casting their substance away. He's taking their substance away and giving it away to other people. <laughs> so this is the reason why you see all these wicked people doing good. 
You think they're being used of God? No, God is not using them. God is taking their money and their wealth that they, that they gather together and giving it to somebody else <laughs> for his will. That's what's happening. Because I always used to think that God was speaking to them, but God is not speaking to them, you know. God is using them and taking their money away and casting it to, to, to other people. So anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. I don't know what you're getting from what I'm saying. I'm just going on a bit of a trip here and there across different heavens and all sorts of madness. And there's a lot more I can say, but it's 20 minutes. And my kids are still playing over on the side. And I don't even know where I'm going with what I'm talking about. But, you know, I know there's something in there that must be helping you guys. I like the heavenlies and how to understand it. The conscious realm, the subconscious realm, the conscious realm. I'm telling you, we all have access to it. And the thing is, you can get possessed in that area. I've got to watch out. Watch out for that conscious area, that new age stuff, crystal, that sort of stuff. That you get possessed with that because a crystal, a crystal that people wear around their neck and pendants, that has an evil spirit can be attached to it, depending on how where where what mindset is attached to it. So that crystal could be a physical manifestation of an evil spirit's mindset on that crystal. And people are wearing it saying it's the power of the crystal. Evil spirits on it, a bondage is on it. There's a bondage attached to that crystal. So like I said about bondage earlier as well, bondage is all in the mind. So that's why God come to free the mind, free the soul. He frees your mind. Once you're free here, your whole body's free. It's like they talk that demons, a lot of demons, sickness is all demons. Most of it's all demons. In the, in the New Testament, Christ always cast out the demons. Okay, when, when a person was sick, Christ cast out the demon and then the person was healed. So a demon will get into your mind through the soul area because you open the door to it. Woo, it's a different revelation that is altogether. I might talk about that. It's about the soul area again, or the, 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 the conscious realm on how you people open doors and let evil spirits in, but they think it's them, but it's not, it's an evil spirit. See, I found out that a lot of people that get possessed think it's them. They can't, and they can't differentiate between a demon's voice and their voice. They think it's the same. They can't differentiate between God's voice, it's even sons of God. We, you can't differentiate between an angel's voice, God's voice, and your own voice because you haven't got enough experience. You don't know what you sound, you don't know what God sounds like. So in the world, people get possessed by demons and they think it's them. They think it's them talking to themselves. No, it's not. Because they can't differentiate between the voices. Me now, I know if a demon's talking to me, because a demon will always try to manipulate you to do wickedness. He'll always try to, a demon will always try to manipulate you to go against the scripture. That's when you know it's a demon. So for example, you know, come on, you go have sex with that girl over there. Go on, have sex, it's okay. God, 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 God said it's okay. See, that's a demon talking. Why? Because, or do fornication or whatever. Why? Because that's a demon. How do I know? Because it goes against what the scriptures say. That's why I know it's a demon. Demons always try to manipulate you to do wickedness. That's how you know if a demon's talking to you. Even though it's your own voice. That it sounds like your own voice. But you can tell the motive behind it. You know it's not you. Because sometimes, right, check this out. Second heaven talk. You're like sitting there and you get a weird voice in your, in your ears. Oh, well, where did that come from? You sit on the bus. Why are you going to, are you going to punch that person in the face? <laughs> where did that come from? That's second heaven. Second heaven has a demon talking to you from the soulish, soulish realm in the second heaven that you have access to all day, every day. That's what it speaks to you. It's like wicked, bad dreams you have. Soulish realm, when you're sleeping, your body's asleep, but your mind goes, your soul is now open and up. It's fully open to the spiritual realm or the second heaven realm, the conscious level realm. And that's the reason why you get nightmares. This is the reason why or you get dreams from God, revelation, or you get, you get a bondage, you wake up all, oh, why am I so tired? You wake up in the, in the morning like, oh wow, I feel so tired, even though I slept for like eight hours, I feel so tired. It's like you feel like you've been in a war. You have when you've been sleeping. You've been in the second heaven, where the soulish realm is. This is the reason why, it's powerful second heaven talk, you know. This is the reason why you can, you can connect to people in the spirit. You can, you can, you, you, you can ah, conscious, I know I'm talking about, I'm going to stop, I'm going too long. I'm going to talk about conscious level. You have a single consciousness and you have a full consciousness of all the people that's around you. You have a single consciousness and you have a group consciousness. I'm going to stop. Listen, it's Robert, an ambassador for Christ. Don't know where I'm going, it's a bit dark, sorry. And, you know... I don't know. It's Robert, an ambassador for Christ. And as you know, where I go, the kingdom goes. And, you know, if you're here right now, then you must have sit through all my rambles. <laughs> but stay blessed, okay, people. I'll talk to you guys a bit later, all right? Stay blessed.